there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today's equipment autopsy is on a Toastmaster egg cooker, model 6504U. It's pretty awesome. Rock simple, this is gonna be an easy one. They don't always have to be big, epic, gnarly things. Let's take a look inside. Now on the outside, we've got a little tray and a switch with off, on, and happy little dome thing. I don't know what that is, but I really wanna draw a face on it. This could be really cool for all kinds of other home science stuff as just a good little hot plate. You can't really control the temperature too much on it, but I'm guessing it'd be pretty handy. You could do a lot with like growing crystals, making rock candy, stuff like that with something as simple as this. Especially when you're doing a lot of crystal stuff, you don't wanna use like regular kitchen cookware because some of the chemicals are pretty gross. But if you had like a, a little egg cooker like this, it would work fine. Because you don't need to get it really, really hot. All right, I think that should be it for screws. Looks like it. We just gotta motivate it a little. See, a lot of the stuff that we take apart in the equipment autopsy series is designed to go together one time and never come apart. They don't design things to be fixed so much anymore. So you have to get a little creative at wedging and snapping and popping things apart. And that's why there's so many moments of, hmm, pop! Oh, that's how it goes. I'm just gonna stick that in there and work my way around with a big crowbar. Remember when I said this would be a nice, quick, easy one? Yeah, that was a lie. Going in from the bottom. That's the way to do it. Okay. All right, now we got that popped open. Let's get a look inside. Now, the outside, we just have the, the cord coming through the back cover, so there's nothing to that. Inside, it gets a little bit more interesting. You can see down in here, we've got, here's our power cord coming in. Goes to a little terminal block, and that goes to a little jumper wire that might be a thermal fuse down in here. We'll take a look at that. And we've got our heating element up here. This is the heating element. 120 volts, 350 watt heating element. And we've got our switch over here. We've got a little coil back here, which I'm not sure what that is, but we'll find out pretty quick. I'm guessing that's a thermostat. And then we've got this up here, which is probably a safety device. It may also be a thermostat, but let's get digging into it and figure out what's what. Now because this is just a heater and there's really nothing to it, I'm just gonna cut the power feed off of it because we know we're not gonna plug it in. There's nothing to see. Usually when possible, I like to plug things in and show you guys how they work, but I can't really do that with this one because, hey, that's hot. Doesn't really transmit well for video. So we'll open up some wire connections in the uh, little strip there. We can take this off. This is just the wire clamp. Put 
Because the more clutter I can get out of here, the easier this will be for you guys to understand. So we'll take this out and loosen those connections. You see they have little crimp on end plates. It's probably a slightly higher class version of tinning a lead. Cut that off. Now this one I'm actually curious about. I want to see what this is. There's, I'll show you down here. On the terminal block, there's this little jumper wire. And that might just be a jumper wire or it might be something more. And given that they took the time to insulate it and everything, I'm guessing it's something more than just a jumper wire. So let's have a look at that. All right, here's, here's our dingus. Unfold it, open it up, and slide it right out. Ah, we've got a thing. What is this? This is a thermal fuse. Yep, this is a safety device. When this reaches a certain temperature, it melts and it just breaks the connection. So that's, that's a thermal safety right there. And I'm guessing, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing it's rated for 117 degrees Celsius. You can see 117C right there on it. So that's a thermal fuse. That's neat. All right, let's see what else we find. You'll find those in almost every home appliance that makes hot. Like uh, coffee makers always have them. It's hmm. our next level. I'm gonna get this plate here off. Snap out my Leatherman. And we'll just loosen these. And that'll come right out. Now this should let us take the whole top piece right out of it, nice and easy. I'll take this out, and I'm just going to cut those wires because it's the easy way. Now this is a little thermostat, I think, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's gonna be this right here is a little thermostat. And all that does is when it gets hot enough, it opens the circuit so that the power turns off to the heating unit. And in here, you guys can see it better over there, in here, you can see this long piece with a wire in each end. That's just a simple resistive heating element, and they even went so far as to label it so that you can see 120 volts, 350 watts. Now, using Ohm's law, can you tell me how many amps this draws? There's your question there. See if you can figure that out. If you know that you're going to feed it with 120 volts and you know it's going to draw 350 watts, how many amps does it take to power that? And you can use this, like if you're building a, a small Tesla coil at home or something like that, you could actually use this as resistive ballast for current limiting, which is kind of handy. So what else do we have? I think we just have the little switch in there. There's really nothing to that. And I don't know what this does. And that's going to bug me because it looks just like a little coil. It looks like a relay, but it only has two wires. So it's a buzzer, maybe? I think it's a buzzer. Look at this. There's just two wires that feed into a coil. Over the coil is a little thing. Now it looks at first glance like a relay, but there's no contacts to switch. So I think this is just a buzzer.
because if you just energize a coil with a little piece of metal over it, it's probably just going to make a buzzing noise. But let's find out just to be sure. I can use my Leatherman a moment here and strip this wire and strip this wire. And we can just plug this in. Do not try this at home. It's crazy stupid. I'm probably going to die doing something like this. But I'm going to stick this wire right in the end of my extension cord here. I'm going to make really sure not to touch any of the exposed metal surfaces on there. I'm going to stick this in there. I need to strip more wire so I can reach in there deep enough. They used really good, the, the quality, the build quality on this is actually quite impressive. The wire's all silicone. It's all tinned wire. It's really nice. If, if you're ever buying an egg timer, I recommend these guys. All right. Now, let's watch this and see what happens. Ah, it's a buzzer. See, I was right. Now, what's happening is that when this little coil gets energized with AC, it only becomes an electromagnet for just a brief moment, uh, a, a one thirtieth of a second, and then the waveform goes the other way. But as it does, it crosses zero, and then it becomes an electromagnet the other way, and the polarity reverses. So this, every thirtieth of a second, pulls down, so it buzzes at 60 hertz, like that. So that's kind of cool. That's a nifty little buzzer, and a really good thing to use to annoy Dave if I hide one in his office. I'm going to keep that. All right, so that's our look at the thing. It's pretty simple, just an egg timer. You guys have fun. Keep exploring. I'm Chris Bowden. This is The Geek Group, and you can learn more at thegeekgroup.org, where you can go, become a member, and get involved, and play with stuff like this yourself. See ya. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.